Hi everybody, this is Jessica Carrier with the Joe Davis Conservation Foundation. Thanks again for joining us for another Facebook live event this beautiful Thursday morning. I am here with Mich Michelle Brugan of the Friends of Wapello Volunteer Group with the JDCF. And we are out here at the Wapello Land and Water Reserve. Uh, before we jump into our session today, I want to recognize our sponsor of today's uh, Facebook Live event, the First Community Bank of Galena, Apple River State Bank, has generously sponsored this uh, Facebook Live event and many other events for us too. So, um, big thank you to them. Uh, Michelle Brugan is part of the Friends of Wapello. They're a volunteer group that come out here to do some stewardship tasks, they plan events. Uh, we meet every first Tuesday of the month. Um, it's a really great volunteer community that gets together uh, to help a common cause of restoring this prairie and uh, drawing some attention to it. So uh, we're out here at Wapello. Um, Wapello is uh, over 180 acres of a restored prairie ecosystem. We're surrounded by the Hanover Bluffs. It's a beautiful view out here. And right now is prime time to see some really cool prairie blooming flowers. So Michelle Brugan is going to tell us about some of these flowers, how to ID some of these and other cool little, little tidbits. So I'm gonna hand this over to Michelle and we will take a walk. Well, let's jump right in. I think a lot of viewers will recognize one of our sweetest little plants, Daisy flea, but Fleabane. It's a member of the Aster family, and it loves disturbed soil. So you find it in the middle of a parking lot, you find it in a ditch near the road. It's just a fabulous little bloomer that brings color all summer long. Right behind it is another fabulous prairie plant called Yarrow. And Yarrow is a great addition to any perennial garden because again, prolific bloomer, lasts all summer. And look at these beautiful, feathery, lacy leaves. Just such pretty foliage. Grows about two foot high. And the um, medicinal purpose, it's a little bit anti-bug. Uh, it's a repellent slightly, the yarrow. It has a beautiful, strong smell as well. Many prairie plants have delicious smells, so you, you're constantly bombarded with uh, interesting smells as you, as you walk through the prairie. So let's go see what else we can find. This next species is one most of you will recognize, the pale purple coneflower. Such a, a uh, gorgeous color. There's also the yellow-headed coneflower. It looks quite different to the pale purple. But uh, we wanted to show you right next to these just, just beginning to bloom, just beginning to bloom stems are the stems from last year. And that's a full seed head filled with seeds. So when we collect prairie seed in the fall, we just clip that head and then it's milled and you can see the seeds just flying out of it. It's quite bristly. So we wear leather gloves. Now just Next to that is a purple coneflower seed head that's been worked on by the, bee, by the birds. Oh, wow. Oh, that's so cool. And they do a ton of dist seed distribution, of course, for us. species is called prairie phlox. These same family as the phlox we all have in our gardens, but on the prairie it's particularly tough and resilient. It blooms in dry, rocky, sandy, oak savanna, shady, sunny, you can see here it's got slightly paler pink color oh, wow. huh. now at the end of its bloom, or that might actually have been that shade. I'm not quite sure. Cool. But we get these neat pops of pink all across the prairie. I didn't realize it could be different colors like that. That's really cool. Wow. 
let's see what else do we have you know just being out here is part of the magic and we have a 15 minute rule we call it 15 minute factor after 15 minutes on the prairie you, you feel great you just feel happy now We've got a really wonderful uh, display this year by the Beard Tongue Fox Glove. You want to hold, hold your card up there, Jess? This plant blooms in early, early or late spring, early summer. And because of the heavy rains this spring, it's just having an amazing season. And we see a blanket of white to the south of us, to the west of us. So we'll see a lot more of this plant. This is another excellent choice for your perennial garden. I've got these at home and they're almost in total shade, but they do just fine. So they love sun, semi-shade, shade. They're really strong bloomers. And then the foliage is quite beautiful for the rest of the year, even when their, their bloom is finished. You'll notice these gorgeous little tubular bells, perfect size for a bee to crawl inside there. And I just saw one do that the other day, so maybe we'll be lucky and see that today. But right now, to be a bee here at Wapalo is a fine, fine thing because there's almost, there probably would be millions of plants in bloom. And would you say that there's more of this uh, bearded tongue flowering right now than normal? Oh, by far. Really? By this, okay. 2020 um, has just been a prolific year for the, fo for the fo uh, fox glove. Uh, we've never seen it in these numbers before. Wow. And the prairie's about 12 years old. It's just maybe it's the burns last year. Maybe it's the heavy rainfall. Maybe it's those cold, frosty nights we had oh, okay. in May. So don't quite know why, but you'll see just blankets of white all across the prairie. It's having a huge year. Let's go find a spider wart because that's the companion to the foxglove. And it's all year. Here she is. And these plants are some of the ones that are most beloved to us because they turn up early when we're craving color after winter. So the spiderwort is um, a lovely, tall, striking plant that, again, look at, the, look at the beautiful leaves. So a good choice for your perennial garden. But amazingly, each one of these little blue faces lasts only one day. One day. So every morning, there's literally thousands and thousands of fresh blooms opening here on the prairie. Now, the spiderwort was really prized by Native Americans because they would eat it like asparagus, <laughs> which I think we should try one of these days. Yeah, huh. It was also a poultice was made from the flowers and the leaves to treat skin conditions, wounds, and infections. So. Um, as, as you'll see, again, when we pan out for the bigger shots, you'll see just how prolific the spider ward is this year, too. And one of our most prized early spring bloomers is called Golden Alexanders. And here at Wapello, we have a special treat for you today because we've got two species. The one is the most commonly seen. It's already bloomed, so it's kind of a dull yellow. It's called Golden Alexanders. And this plant actually looks like poison parsnip a little bit. And it's not uh, un unusual because they're both the same family of plants. They're called parsleys. But this one, of course, is not noxious in any way. In fact, they used it again medicinally. But right now, this species of golden alexanders behind it, the smaller, shorter plant, is a brighter yellow because it's blooming. And its secret to tell the difference between the two plants is a beautiful heart-shaped leaf at the base of the plant. Can you get that in there? Isn't that precious? So only that variety of that species makes that beautiful heart. It's like a little love note. Okay, well, we're coming into the wet area of Wapello. It's a lot lower here, pretty marshy. A lot back along here because it's underwater. So we start to see different species. Oh, and they're going. <laughs> 
Oh, these are one of our absolute pride and joy. It's pra pra Prairie Blazing Star, which many of our viewers will have seen probably out here. This beautiful little head is going to be a bright pink, and it's going to be, the flower is going to be anywhere up to two inches long, and there will be thousands of them by late July. So we hope you'll come back and witness this special, special treat. Wapello is the largest uh, colony of prairie blazing stars, probably in northwest Illinois. Wow. Certainly amongst JDCF properties, and there aren't many people that have big, mm -hmm. big tracts of prairie. So that's really something to look forward to. But then, right along the edges of this marshy area are blue flag iris. Now they've kind of finished blooming, uh, but just two weeks ago, there were a lot of them. And interspersed right amongst them, these wonderful little meadow anemone plants bloom. They're the best of friends because they both love wet conditions. This is a buttercup family plant. See how precious that face is? And then the blue flag iris, the tall spiky iris leaves, is a pale purple or a dark blue. So again, we get that beautiful white and purple combination in early spring. Look at that clump of spiderwort right there. Oh. Uh, Maureen's asking, how big is the prairie? Big as the prairie. How big is this prairie? Well, there's two sections. So the first one is 79 acres, of which 69 is actually tall grass prairie. Ten of it, the ten other 10 acres are wooded areas. Um, the newer area, which has also been restored though, but it's a brand new baby basically in prairie, t prairie terms, is, um, eight, is uh, 98 acres or 88 acres for a total of 180 roughly. So this is a this this tract is eight is seventy by itself. Here we see some great little um, sedges, which feed birds, draw insects. You'll see sedges just scattered and many different varieties on Wapello. We were lucky with Wapello because we had really good seed funding, um, which allowed us to put in over one hundred forbs. This is a very diverse prairie. So 100 forbs, those are the blooming flowers, and I believe there were over 30 different grasses and sedges. Don't ask me to name them though, wow, Jess. Oh, see a dragonfly right there oh, on the, yeah. oh, that's a, uh, cool. that. that's a cone, that's a uh, yellow coneflower head and it's just working. But here's another fabulous prairie plant that helps bring water to these very dry areas. It's called a cup plant and it's a very large sunflower. I don't know if you can see it in there, but that's actually a little tiny bit of water captured naturally by the plant. So we see goldfinches, we see dragonflies taking sips, we see all kinds of groovy little critters coming in to get a drink from the well-named cupped plant. And this plant gets very tall and puts up a beautiful yellow sunflower. The other thing is right beside it are a bunch of downy sunflowers, haven't come into bloom yet, but if you feel them you see how soft and velvety their, their uh, leaves are. This is another big, tall, I think we have over eight varieties of sunflowers at Wapello. So as we move into July, you'll see yellow everywhere. What is this over here? Glad you noticed that too, Deb, because those are prairie dock plant, uh, leaves. And they look like, look at them. And the plant is huge. It's one of my very favorite prairie plants. It'll stand over six feet tall by the time it's finished. The stem is thick like a small tree. Big, beautiful yellow sunflowers that last and last. It blooms kind of late and it stays all through September. So in October, when the color is kind of gone, 
the prairie dock is still doing wonderful things for us. So this is another very deep rooted plant. Let's see. Oh, there's a wild white indigo. Oh, Jessica, let's here. let's go look at that. This is one of the most striking blooms at Wapello. It's just gorgeous. It's actually a member of the bean family, but look at the tall, it's up to, they can be even as tall as four or five feet as well. And um, the shape of the leaves and the, the, uh, at the end of the season, the, they dry out completely and they tumble across the prairie like tumbleweed. <laughs> but right now they haven't quite opened yet. We have, their, their faces will still open. And uh, we have a lot of the white variety here at, at, at Wapello. And this is another excellent choice for your garden because it's so showy and pretty even when it's finished blooming, but it blooms a very long time. And then at the end, we get these lovely black pods filled with their seeds. So it's, it's like a bean pod. It's exactly what it is. I should point out these beautiful prairie drop seed grasses. They just love it here. They colonize in big clusters when they find the right conditions. Very beneficial grasses. We often see the deer have made a bed, particularly in the prairie drop seed, because it's so pretty and soft. Not because it's pretty, because it's soft. We have quite a lot of different grasses, as I mentioned earlier. And you'll see clumps of baby blue stem, big blue stem. Here's probably a baby blue coming up based on the size of the leaves, but little. And blue stem is another wonderful prairie plant that gives and gives. We planted a few trees for shade here at the, on the prairie. And this is a chinkapin oak tree, which is uh, particularly well adapted for this part of the prairie because it's a little lower lying, a little more moist. Not, not something we see quite as frequently in Joe Davis County. They, they're more of a southern occurring oak species, but they're really lovely and their bark is so striking. So we're really glad to see this, this shade coming from our few, from our trees. <laughs> Let's see, what else can we find? This is Rattlesnake Master. Almost looks like a, an aloe, a cactus. It's a, uh, another very prolific plant out here. Um, you'll see these olive gray, pretty blue gray leaves all across the prairie. The head when it pokes up is also something you'll see next month when you come back, if you come back, because it's beautiful white round balls, quite hard to touch. And so when we picked the, the Rattlesnake Master at the end of the year again, we were, what? Because the balls are uh, named that way, apparently because they resemble the, the tail of a rattler. But there's nothing poisonous about this beautiful little guy. He adds so much. And I, again, I think this is another one we find in our nurseries now. Good plant to put in your garden. Does it unfussy? I like plants that don't need a lot of work. <laughs> Yeah, we've set some records out here at Wapello for insects even. Yes, yes. Awesome Let's stop here at the wild quinine, wild white quinine. This is an aster family plant again. You can kind of tell the similarity in the leaves, the beautiful ruffled leaves. But quinine is an extraordinary plant. If you touch the bloom gently, it's really hard. It's like little, uh, little balls. And quinine, of course, is very prized right throughout history for its fever-reducing abilities. And we're sure the Native Americans probably used it as well. So there's a lot of wild white quinine. A few years ago, we burned very hard on the river trail over towards the river there and the next year we just had a huge display of wild, wild quinine so it responds well to fire. 
different sections get burned every single year. Mm -hmm. I, I believe it's a, every four years you, you want to burn a section or three or four. You can hear the red-winged blackbirds clucking at us and diving on us. They, uh, they nest out here on the prairie, so part of the joy of the males and the females, but they're just protecting. They won't hurt you. They're, they oh. won't hurt you. And they're protecting their nests. Yeah. Yeah. So if you, if you get a little too close, just throw your arms up and say, hi. Hi there. So do you want to talk just a little bit about the friends of Lapello and their role out here on the prairie? Sure, I'd love to. It's a lot of fun because we come out every Tuesday. In the summer times, we uh, work from eight till 10. Um, in, in, the, in the shoulder seasons, we move that time back to nine to 11. So we just do two hour stints to keep everybody comfortable. But during that time, we get to walk the trails. We do a lot of maintenance. Um, we get uh, trained a little bit by the, a lot of different uh, helpers. So you get to learn about the prairie but uh, we're, we focus on invasive species that tend to come in right at the edge of the trail because it's open there. The, the prairie does an astonishing job of keeping out these invaders once it's established itself. And this part of Wapello really has, you know, it's, it's now 12 years old. So um, our invaders are often right along the edges, making them nice and easy to get out. Um, we have had a lot of help too. I'd like to mention the Northwest Illinois Prairie Enthusiasts. They are just our go-to guys for uh, assistance on everything. And they have helped uh, to teach us about the prairie, what species to look for. Because as the prairie uh, matures, more and more conservative species that haven't even yet put in an appearance start to turn up. That's part of the fun of a prairie. They talk about, think like a prairie. That's in a hundred years. <laughs> so some of these species just wait. They're in the ground. They just wait till the right conditions evolve, and then they 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 bloom out and show you themselves. So we'd really like to thank Barb Sikowski and Ed and many of the people from Prairie Enthusiasts who help us out so much here. But yeah, anybody wanting to join the Friends of Rapello, you don't need any <laughs> qualifications or. or um, and we come out, of course, being prepared for conditions. Though we usually wear pretty solid footwear and, and uh, we cover our arms and legs because we're walking through the prairies and um, we, we'd love to have anybody join us. That's Tuesdays from 8 till 10 and uh, what else do I need to say Jess? We did. I think that's that pretty much hits everything. We are also meeting on Zoom so for the time being. Um, yeah stewardship days every Tuesday and meeting once a month first Tuesday of the month. Uh, if you would like, if you're interested in joining this group, you can contact us at info at jdcf.org. So, let us know if you'd like to join that group. Okay, let's see. What do we have left? Well, we wanted to show you this fantastic white carpet. Should we step a little closer? And here we can see just the pale yellow left from a big colony of golden alexanders, mostly finished now, but the penstemon or the foxglove and the spiderwort, just thick and lush this year. Now over here we have some short coreopsis starting to put out a little flower head, so that'll be a beautiful yellow very soon. And then mountain mint is another prairie uh, flower that many viewers will remember or at least have seen somewhere. Leaves, no, no flower heads yet, but when it blooms, this is the mint family. So the wonderful thing about mint family plants, they've got a square stem. So you can always tell that they're that family. I believe even the wild quinine is a square stem. And then mountain mint always has this beautiful, refreshing mint smell to it. And that was, of course, used for digestion and teas and female problems and just everything, I'm sure, by, uh, by many different settlers and Native Americans. Some more downy sunflowers. 
And then we're going to talk a little bit about how the prairie establishes itself and manages to, 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 to produce blooms all throughout the season. Jess, do you want to take that over for sure. us? Um, well, maybe you just want to hang out over here. Sure. So I want to show you guys this cool uh, chart here. Uh, Michelle's talked a lot about all different kinds of species and the amount of diversity in this prairie is overwhelming. And you would wonder how in the world can all of these different species all live together so close? Well, their root systems, you can see in this diagram, they reach different depths in the soil. So the different depths of the soil uh, allow them to take up different nutrients and allows them to work well together. Uh, they, uh, they have really developed or evolved over a long period of time to be able to work in this prairie ecosystem together and, uh, and our, no, our agricultural system has the prairies to thank for that, yeah. <laughs> for all the good soil. Uh, so, so all of this biodiversity you see in the prairie, in any ecosystem, biodiversity is key for overcoming any adversity. In any system, in any kind of community, diversity is key for overcoming adversity. So come on out to Wapello. You can check out the interpretive signs. There's over three miles of hiking trails. And remember, it's, uh, it is is owned by the Joe Davis Conservation Foundation and open to the public for free. So uh, if you want to know more about us, it's at, you can check us out at www.jdcf.org. Um, and thank you, Michelle, for joining us today. My we'll pleasure. We'll see you guys again next Thursday. Oh, I, I guess I should ask if there's any questions. Are there any questions? Okay, no questions at this well, time. One question. Okay. Um, what if you would like to bring your dog? Ah, so if so, dogs are allowed on a leash. It's very important that you keep your dog on a leash for many reasons. Oh. One reason because there's a lot of nesting birds. This structure that the prairie builds is really good habitat for birds and insects and all kinds of wildlife. So it's important to stay on trail and have your dog on a leash at all times. So, uh, and also pick up after your dog. If it goes to the bathroom, pick it up. And we provide the, the stations. That's right, yep. We have the little doggy bag station right there at the kiosk. Um, it's a great place to come walk your dog on a leash. <laughs> so yeah, uh, any more questions before we sign off? Okay. Well, thank you guys for joining us. We'll see you again next Thursday morning.